debates that's emerging in the fight against COVID-19 conspiracy theories and distrust in the vaccine in the black community. We're talking about beauty salons and barbershops. But this is part of a program called, and the acronym is HAIR, that's for the Health Advocates in Reach and Research Initiative Program. It was founded by Stephen Thomas, who runs the Maryland Center for the Health Equity at the University of Maryland School of Public Health. And it's intended to stop false information about the virus and encourage vaccinations. So Professor Thomas is with us now, along with Katrina Randolph. She is a beautician participating in the program and the owner of Trey Shades Hair Studio. Katrina, uh, Thomas, Mr. Thomas, thank you so much, Professor Thomas. We appreciate it. I want to start with you, uh, Professor Thomas. How, how does this problem work, or this program <laughs> work? Excuse me. We know how the problem works. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It's a pleasure and honor to be with you this morning. You know, uh, it's a public health approach, and public health runs on trust. So why not go where people already trust? And in the black community, that's our barbershops and beauty salons. No, no self-respecting barber or stylist would ever say, I'll get you in and out in 15 minutes. It's a community gathering place and a wonderful demonstration of how to reach people where they are. And for the past 10 years, we've been building the bridge of trust in these communities. And now in the midst of the pandemic, we need it now more than ever. Katrina, what are some of the rumors or the myths you hear people talk about that you are, because of, of your training and, and your education through the program, are able to correct? Well, a lot of the um, topics in the salon today is just about, like Dr. T said, is mistrust in the healthcare um, community. So one of the ways I'm able to advocate for my clients is I just discuss with them um, the research studies that we have been going over um, with the health advocate group, and I'm able to share that information with them and encourage them to just do their research and um, go on CDC and read up on this vaccination before you take the approach of not wanting the vaccination because of misinformation. So, uh, Do uh, Professor Thomas, there, there are reasons for medical mistrust in, in the black community, and not everyone knows the frightening history of mistreatment by the health care system, the medical racism that exists. Tell us about that history. Well, you know, the history of racism in medicine and public health would be easy to ignore if it wasn't so well documented. And that's the bright light that COVID has shined, that the hesitancy in the black community doesn't mean no forever. But it does mean you have to recognize that there has been a history, there's a reason, a legitimate reason for the distrust. And it can go from the legacy of the Tuskegee syphilis study to the Henrietta Lacks story. All of these things have an effect. But the most important thing is how my loved one was treated last week when they were in the hospital. The everyday racism and discrimination that people of color face also contributes to the hesitancy. Mm -hmm. Katrina, go ahead. Were, were you hesitant at all about the vaccine before you you learned more about it through the program? I, I was definitely hesitant about the vaccine, and I'm still a little hesitant, but a little more hopeful now that I have more information, now that I've done my own research and even been a part of the health advocate group, um, being able to learn a little more about the vaccination. So even myself and my clients are a little more hopeful now than getting the vaccination. I hear a lot of my clients now saying, Katrina, where can I sign up? Do you have a list of places where they're giving the vaccination? So the, the conversation has definitely um, shifted to being more hopeful. Do you truly appreciate, you know, the power you have, Katrina, to, you know, write some of the misinformation that's out there? I mean, you're reaching people that obviously, you know, Professor Thomas wishes that he could. Yes. Oh, it's definitely a blessing to be able to reach people, encourage them, um, help them with this misinformation, advocate for them. Yes, it's truly, I truly enjoy um, being a part. Professor Thomas, go ahead. Well, I think it's important to note that the training that we were doing with our barbers and stylists occurred before COVID. It's about those chronic diseases, those underlying conditions. And it's important to note now that, that Katrina has been certified by the state of Maryland as a certified community health worker because of the training that she completed with us here at the University of Maryland School of Public Health. So the barbershop and the salons can be a new home for health care on the other side of this pandemic. Not just yes. going in to get a hair a hairstyle anymore. Katrina Randolph, <laughs> Stephen B. Thomas, we appreciate both of you so much. Thank you for taking time for us today. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Make it a great day. Prince Harry. You as well.
Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan accused the palace of racist